Welcome to the Essex jungle, a unique habitat renowned for its exotic species and rare birds of paradise. But there's another jungle, behind the front doors of ordinary people's homes, where some of the world's wildest and most dangerous animals lurk. 30,000 exotic animals imported into Essex every year. In this series, we meet the people who own them. Some people think they're disgusting, but they look lovely when they're eating. I've been bitten left, right, and centre to your Burmese, to the boas. You can't stroke a fish. Why would you have a fish? The people who sell them. Uh, they're quite soppy. People in Essex are just being brave, I suppose. These are lethal weapons. You know, these can kill people. And the people who rescue them. Some of these animals should never have ever been pets. And this is one of them. Essex has always been wild. Just like that. You just didn't know how wild. Coming up in this episode, we attend a yoga class with a difference. When you are scared of the snake, you're actually scared of your own spirituality. We meet a man forced to take his snakes on the bus. No one's just really thought about the people that don't drive. That's it, come on, back off. And Ian Newby faces his toughest rescue yet. Oh, she's so fast. I don't trust this. This quiet cul-de-sac in the town of Great Wakery, Essex, is home to the dangerous wild animal rescue facility, otherwise known as Dwarf a sanctuary for the county's unwanted exotic animals. Right, what about beaky egg? <laughs> it's breakfast time for dwarf founder Ian Newby, his wife Lisa and their six children. Beaky egg! I'll start making it, all right? Stay, watch telly, be good. When feeding a large brood, sharing a home with over 70 wild animals, including Beaky the emu, has its culinary perks. What egg? She's a good girl. Emus are the second largest bird in the world. Their eggs can be 10 times the size of a chicken's. This is where you need a bit of muscle, because these eggs are strong. Crikey, look at that. I'll break the kitchen first. Got it. Right. Look at the size of that. That is one major egg. Come down with me, watch out. What's Ian's cooking like generally, Lisa? Very good, I have to say, actually. And do you like emu egg? I do. It's, it's much, much creamier than a normal chicken egg. I suppose the only drawback is obviously you have to have the emu. I'm lucky to have a wife that puts up with me. But she's probably just as mad as I am. And I think the kids are following suit. They think this is the norm. There we go. Emu egg for breakfast. Cool, you wouldn't want two, would you? Yeah, 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 it's breakfast time. Yeah. Right, come and sit down. Oh, wow. There you go. I want the yolk. Oh, look at that. Because I love the yolk. I want to be good to watch as well. Yeah. That dinosaur egg. Dinosaur egg, yes. I want to be good every day. Ian receives over 100 calls a month from people desperate to offload their wildest animals. Sillies! As the kids polish off the beaky egg, he's off on his first mission of the day, armed with two sleeping bags. Today, Ian is driving down the M25 to Surrey to take charge of two Cayman crocodiles, a mission of the utmost gravity. Don't bite your hand if it's anywhere near their back leg. And they've got the ability to turn the whole body around and get you. So I'll have a fight on my hands, but I'm sure I'll better get over that. Still apprehensive, you know, because obviously I don't want anything to go wrong. But if they're nice and big and bulky, they're going to be very, very strong. Um, just have to wait and see. The crocs are currently being held at a zoo. They need to be rehoused to make room for new animals coming in. An adult crocodile's bite is ten times the strength of a great white shark. 
Ian must use all 30 years of his experience to capture the animals. Firstly, he tries to separate the crocs using a simple household broom. You right there. <laughs> Come on, move, one of you. All right. Come on, no. That way. You could just stop it now, couldn't you? Uh -uh. That's it, come on, back off. Having cornered the croc, Ian must now cover it to shut out light and minimise the stress. Ah, <laughs> she's so fast. One of the fastest reptiles in the world, this caiman has other ideas. I don't trust this. Has Ian finally met his match? She's angry, isn't she? Coming up, it's round two for Ian. Yeah, a toughie. And there's an escapee at pet shop Scales and Fangs. His door was open, so the snakes took the opportunity and done a runner. Ian Newby, from exotic animal rescue group Dwarf, has travelled to Surrey to adopt two Cayman crocodiles from a zoo that's making room for new stock. Uh, uh, she may back off and try and turn away from you. It's proving to be one of his most difficult rescues ever. Just turn her head around a bit fast. Yeah. Who's got the tape? Just put a little bit of room underneath her jaw. Crocodile teeth can tear human flesh to the bone. So Ian uses yeah. electrical tape to firmly shut its jaws. Yeah, toughy. Oh, dear. Okay. Right. Sheet drops. Ain't they good? It's funny how docile they go when they're being caught. The croc is placed in a sleeping bag to shut out light and reduce anxiety. As it gets comfy, there's no time for a lie down for Ian. With both crocs safely tucked in, Ian begins the two-hour journey back to base. Crocs are fine, not too much stress. I think that went quite well. But has Ian spoken too soon? Halfway home and one of the crocs has slipped out of its sleeping bag. Zucker, 
Did you open that window from inside? As they settle in, Ian notices one final problem. Right, I'll close the window then. It's back into the enclosure. You grumpy, you are. And he's thinking, you come any closer and I'm going to get you. He's protecting her. The crocs will be rehoused with Ian before finding a new permanent home. Job done. Down the coast in the tiny village of Rochford, Mark Golder and his girlfriend Corey Coombs are preparing for a journey that could change their lives. Thank you. <laughs> Corey and Mark live with Corey's mum and have been together for two years. But their first love has always been snakes. Lola is a salmon boa constrictor. She's my girlfriend's snake that she got for her birthday. And this is Eleanor. She's a granite albino Burmese. I do love this snake. Besotted, 21-year-old Mark and 20-year-old Corrie take Eleanor and Lola everywhere. But travelling with two cold-blooded reptiles is a problem. A lot of people that have reptiles have cars and all you have to do is literally stick it in a box and then have the heating on which keeps them warm because if they get too cold they die but no one's just really thought about the people that don't drive. So budding entrepreneur Mark has invented a temperature controlled portable snake tank. I never created the box to uh, make money, I only created the box to obviously look after my animals. But I hope it does go global. That would be a real exciting thing for it to go global, definitely. Today, Mark is putting the finishing touches to his invention. We need to drill in some air holes to make sure the snakes have fresh air coming in and hot air going out. Whoops. Bit of carpet. Is that your mum's carpet? <laughs> yes, it is my mum's carpet. I must admit her mum doesn't know about that at the moment. But, uh... <laughs> We've covered it up with a nice rug at the moment. <laughs> with the boxes complete, it's time for Eleanor and Lola to take their places. Temperature in there at the moment is 17.5 degrees. I'll turn the battery packs on now. There you go. She's in there, she's in there. Well done. Native to Central America and Southeast Asia, Lola and Eleanor cannot regulate their own body temperatures. If Mark's creations are going to be a success, they must keep the pets between 24 and 30 degrees centigrade. If they get too cold, they die. And if they get too hot, they die. So you need to get that perfect yeah, temperature, perfect. basically. It's time for the ultimate field test. On a three mile bus ride to Southend on Sea. But no one's told the good people of Essex. What, you're going to come on the bus with that? You're scared of them then? Well, I'm scared of them because my mate's got a python, but that big, and it kills people. It doesn't kill him. That's what I'm too scared to go around his house. He's got a python, and the dog, and the cat. <laughs> You can have a new film, I'm just saying. There were snakes on a plane, and now you can make the new film, Snakes on a Bus. <laughs> Essex style. It's unusual to see snakes. I put the heat mat underneath all the wood chippings. She's lifting everything up. That's one thing I didn't really think about. Alright. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
I've just uh, checked the temperature with my infrared thermometer. It's about 25 degrees, which is a nice heat. Despite a mixed reception, don't you dare! Oh, yeah, please. Don't you dare! Mark snakes are warm and happy in their temporary homes. He even chances an outing. Beautiful oh, gorgeous. So one-year-old Lola can meet a solitary admirer. It's a beautiful Snake charmer. Yeah. I better put it back when we get off in a minute. Yeah, so. that's fine. No, I'm going to get off you. No, no, no. Come on, you've got to get on. No, go on, get back in there. No, put your hands on it. No, no, that's it. It's all good. There we go. All right. Thanks, yeah. mate. That was We found out one design flaw. This snake here loves to burrow, and she actually burrowed underneath the heat map. But yeah, this one works perfectly fine. She's been perfectly calm, which means it's a nice temperature in there. So obviously this one needs rethinking, but that one seems to be doing quite well, so I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, definitely. For Mark and Cory, the mobile heat-controlled snake house has been a success. The reward? The long journey home. On the Essex coast in Leon C, Rob Yeldon is preparing breakfast for wife Trish, daughter Jody, Ryan. and twin boys, Sean and Ryan. Ryan! Oi, oi, oi! Give me that back, that's not yours. Sean, just get over here. It's actually quiet. Let's go. Thanks. Thank you, yeah, sorry. Rob owns pet shop Scales and Fangs, so handles some of the wildest animals in Essex. <laughs> But work is a piece of cake compared to his home life. You see, I'm smiling at the kids hanging. <laughs> I'm happy now. I'm relaxed. <laughs> so do you think there's a connection that you've got a shop with animals that make no noise? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm going to fall out yeah. <laughs> At the shop, Rob's first job is to nourish 150 hungry house guests. <gasps> Having fed the residents, Rob must make sure all the reptiles are secure before opening time. Next, um, I'll lock these up. We get a lot of kids coming in, and the last thing we want is for them to op just open the door. No, not no intention of nicking, but just opening the door and allowing the animal to escape. So it protects the animals. But it appears that padlocks are redundant where a more slippery inmate is concerned. Snake's gone. The escapee is the aptly named Lucky, a three-foot corn snake native to North America. This door was open, um, probably by about two and a half inches. So the snakes took the opportunity and, and done a runner. It has gone behind these tanks. No, nope, she's gone in here. So she's now in this bit here. The corn snake can give a nasty bite if it feels threatened. So Rob must have his wits about him, if he can find it. She'll come out the other side, if anything. I can see her tail. And we rescue a piece of wood. We could be all right doing this. I've got an option. Can't hold on the side of this thing. Yep. With Rob's patience waning, he resorts to drastic measures to retrieve one-year-old Lucky. This snake's bid for freedom is nearly at an end. Here we go. With Lucky safe, sound and back on display, a relieved Rob can finally start his day. At the end of the day, I'd rather smash all four vivs up than risk the life of the snake, so it's not that it can't be repaired, it's quite easy. 
So yeah, happy. Coming up, a man whose snakes have helped him overcome adversity. I'm dyslexic, trying to learn to read about the snakes. I'm ten times better than I was at school. And a woman who believes in the healing power of reptiles. If people can get over their fear of the snake, they can get over their fear of anything. In the river town of Greenhithe, 22-year-old carpenter David Snip has spent thousands converting his two-bedroomed pad into a haven for his beloved flatmates. People think I'm quite weird because I like snakes. It's hard to say what I find so interesting about them, really. It's like, why do people like football? Why do girls like going to get their hair done? That's my favourite animal. Some people, their favourite animal might be a dolphin. They can't keep dolphins, whereas my favourite animal is a snake, and I can, so I do. David has been keeping snakes for 10 years and currently has 20 in the flat. Here we have a baby juvenile common boa. His name's Chris. This one here was Arthur, but unfortunately he, he died. That was quite upsetting, so I keep a picture there to remind me of him. This large male behind you, he's Sydney. He's very friendly. This female here, this is Sophie, she's very friendly as well. They do like to climb and have a look around. And this male here, if I can get him out, oh, they're gonna wreck the place. That's Jim. <laughs> they've all got names, they've all got their own characters. I do see them as pets, I just got a lot of them. <laughs> David spends up to four hours a day tending to his treasured litter, but believes that's nothing compared to what he gets back in return. I'm dyslexic and I can't really read or write very well, but I put so much time into trying to learn to read because I was looking up on care sheets, reading what people have written, just learning about the snakes that now, you know, I'm still not brilliant at reading and writing, but I'm ten times better than I was at school. David's favourites, Sophie, Sydney and Jim, are Burmese pythons. Capable of reaching 19 feet in length, it's one of the largest snakes on the planet and can crush and swallow whole mammals like pigs and goats. For David's long-suffering girlfriend, Lucy, things are getting a little cramped in the flat. It started off, we just had the one and she wasn't very big, but as they've kind of got bigger and a bit scary, I'm kind of a bit more wary of them now, especially the Sophie, the biggest one. I'm just not sure where she's going to go or what she's going to do at the time. As if that's not enough, someone else is joining the extended family. So my partner is uh, currently pregnant and we have a baby girl due in June. Looking forward to that. Um, but because of this, we're having to move out of this two bedroom flat because at the moment the snakes have one room and we have the other. So we're moving into a bungalow um, which has got an outhouse at the bottom of the garden. With the impending pitter patter of tiny feet, Lucy has issued David an ultimatum. At their new home, his treasured serpents must live well away from the baby in an outhouse at the bottom of the garden. I'm a little bit worried about what Snake's gonna be like when she's here, but David's very safe. He would never have them out when she was in the house. And certainly now they're gonna be moved into an outhouse. They're not gonna be anywhere near her, so she's gonna be perfectly safe. And I know that he's responsible enough not to put her or me in any kind of danger, really. Potentially, that they, both these large snakes would eat the child. They could, doesn't mean they will, but they could. You just gotta be careful. It's the morning of the move. <sighs> Small box, so let's start with Jim. And some mates have pitched in to help David relocate to his new home. Most of the stuff's out of the house. Um, we just gotta bag up and box all the snakes so that they've got snakes safe to be in for the journey. Then we've got a difficult task of trying to carry all this stuff down the stairs. To shut out light and pacify the snakes, David places them in bags. A lot of people have said to me, you know, when the baby comes, you should get rid of the snakes. And I say, well, as long as I'm careful and I keep them away from the baby, nothing can go wrong and there's no reason why I can't have the best of both worlds. It will be a sad day, the day when I do have to go at the end of the garden. I like having them so easily accessible. One at a time. <laughs> Big ones on the top. 
With Sophie and her pals safely packed away, it's time to tackle 15 snake tanks. Do you think it'd be worth taking all the bulbs out so they don't fall? What would that lot carry it down here? A job easier said than done. Tweedle D and Tweedle down. <laughs> First tank out. <laughs> Native to Southeast Asia, the Burmese python can weigh over 200 pounds. So their homes are far from small. Are you going to help me? Oh, my head. <laughs> Push a little bit. Right, now we want to swing it. Sophie's pied de terre is over 10 feet long. Yeah, we'll have to stand it up here. You have to spin it, if you spin it where you are, they do. Right, is it ready to slide on the stick? Yes, yeah, ready. Right, that's it. Stand back, stick. Once we've got it laid flat on that, I can sort of balance it while we do a switch around. You got it? I'm yeah, yeah. spinning. Coming. A bit more. That's it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everyone get out of the way, let go. Duck down a little bit because the door frame. Right. Lift, lift, lift. There we go. Finally, a job well done for David and his mates. All that's left is to transport the snakes four miles to their new home. In Leytonstone, where Essex meets East London, there lives a woman who is a yoga instructor by day and performance artist by night. My name is Kwali and I have various AKAs. My performance stage name is Kwali Locks. Kwali Kumara is my soul name. Hari Bhajan Kaur is my spiritual name. And my, my birth name is Kelly White. Kwali doesn't do things by halves. As well as having five names, she has 17 snakes. But one in particular is queen of her collection. Hi, baby. Come here to play. Come on, then. Hello, gorgeous. She is the biggest one of all the snakes. Kamara is a rare 13-foot albino python. She's quite a handful. She's definitely too big to sleep in my bedroom like all the others. Because a, a reptile this big is not to be messed with. It's uh, pretty much a baby dragon. And in this room, she has a lot of space. She has all the space that she needs. Kwali has spent six years studying Kundalini yoga and believes a mythical serpent exists in every one of us. Most people, well, if you told them they had a, a, an energetic snake living inside of them, they'd think you were a wacko, you know. But this serpent life force lives within each and every one of us, and it sits coiled like a snake. Oh. Taking her theory, quite literally, Kuali now incorporates her much-loved pets into her yoga so students can conquer their fear of snakes. Today, she's invited Pashet and Kristen to get in touch with their inner serpent. Throughout history, people have definitely been meditating with snakes. I'm not the first, and I won't be the last person to work with snakes in the yoga environment. with the serpents running your fingers over their body we have a meditation in kundalini yoga which means truth and you pronounce it Yoga is about helping to free people of their inhibitions. So for me, the snakes and the yoga, they are one. My main mission on this planet is to rid everybody of serpent fear because when you are scared of the snake, you're actually scared of your own spirituality. 
guide your way on. Guide Kuali believes overcoming a fear of snakes is just the beginning. If I can get people over their fear of the snake, I can help people to get over their fear of anything. Is that now? Is that now? Come in. Welcome to our new house. David Snip and his pregnant girlfriend Lucy have recently settled into a new bungalow in Crayford. Lucy insisted David's 20-strong collection of snakes must move into an outhouse at the bottom of the garden before the arrival of their baby in eight weeks. But when it comes to his much-loved pets, it appears David just can't let go. We're settled in fine now. Everything's packed away. The only things that are really not finished is uh, the, the, shed. Uh, the shed to put the snakes in. But apart from that, everything's all good. You know, we're hoping to have it done before the baby comes, so it's all ready. It will all be done before the baby comes. Yeah, it's a priority. It is a priority. But we know we've, we've still got a couple of months yet, so... Really, we need to do it in the next month or so. So hopefully in the next four weeks it will kind of be somewhere. Yeah. Cause if she comes early, then they'll still be in the house. And then I won't be bringing her back home. <laughs> The only thing that's stopped me from getting it done so far is just having the time. I just, I don't know where time goes. It's not enough hours in a day to get things done. We wouldn't bring her home if they was still yeah. here. It's just not, it's not practical. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm still very confident that, you know, the way I keep them, it's safe. It's more for you in it than me. I'm confident that, you know, I've never had any problems, but there you go. Whether David's adopted brood ever leave home remains to be seen. One thing's for sure, his new arrival might not be short of playmates. This is our baby's first snake. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it the other day in Blue Water. That's just a little impression of me onto her, isn't it? Yeah. I know she's going to like him no matter what. So this is a slow step to triumph. David won, Lucy nil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a say in it, so. Yeah. Coming up, Ian tackles a fearsome beast. It's not going to be too happy moving. Let's just hope it goes well. And Rob converts the animal phobes of Essex. If they end up becoming customers and buying some of the animals, then yeah, of course it's a bonus. Back at the dwarf animal sanctuary in Great Wakering, it's business as usual. Hello. How, how big is it? All right. OK. All right. Bye. Ian Newby has just received a typical call from a distressed owner whose pet has become too big to handle. Not too sure what's in store. This, this animal hasn't been moved since it was a baby. It's not going to be too happy moving. And I know that they're very strong animals. They're very intelligent animals. I'm not sure. To see what happens when I get there. But, yeah, a bit nervy, this one. Let's just hope it goes well. Over the years, Ian has wrestled with crocodiles and tangled with snakes. But today, he's heading to South End for a leap into the unknown. It's really weird to see how big she is now compared to what she was. She's like that. I could hold her in my lap. <laughs> oh, she's a monster. <laughs> Lauren Edwards has had micropigma linko for a year. When I went to the farm, I wanted to get ducks, but there was these little pigs there, and they just looked so adorable and cute. I was like, I really want one. Malinko's teeth can crush raw vegetables with ease. If it was an alligator or a crocodile, I'd have no problem, but being a pig, it's totally different. I just hope it all goes smoothly. This one makes me a little bit nervous. For once, Ian is out of his comfort zone, so he's brought back up. Right, this is it. We just passed the house. Hey, Sean, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Hello, pig. What's her name? Malinko. Malinko. Yeah. Ian's plan is to lure Malinko into a cage that he's assembled in the side passage. Right. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. Come on in. Once she's been caught, Malinko will be rehoused at a nearby animal rescue facility. Come on. You're going to go that way. What's up that alleyway, look? What's up there? Stand. Despite Ian's fears, Malinko seems happy to oblige. Or perhaps not. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Have you got an apple or something? That's a good girl. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Malinka. What's this? Malinka. Come on. Malinka. Come on, then. Yeah. She's a good girl. Close the door, Sean. Turn the bolts, put them on. They would handle about three times that size and three times more aggressive quite happily. Lots of things could have gone wrong then. They didn't, thank goodness. Oh, panic's over. Ian hits the road and heads for the small animals boarding facility near Colchester. Owner Tracy finds new homes for unwanted farm animals and has a big enclosure reserved for Malinko. Like a mother hen, you know, she's going to give this little guy a wonderful home. Happy. No. <laughs> Jenny was fine. She laid down the whole time, bar the flatulence. A little bit of wind. Oh, not something you want to be travelling in your car too long. As well as her distinctive odour, Malinka was also left Ian a farewell gift. She left a little parcel in my Land Rover there. Oh. <laughs> With a big garden and her own kennel, Malinka will be as happy as a pig in the proverbial. In Leon C, exotic pet shop owner Rob Yeldon is preparing for a very special evening. Two tables in one corner for snakes, yep. another couple for the lizards, yep. and then another couple for spiders. As chairman of the South Essex Reptile Club, he is responsible for organising the monthly get together of the county's exotic animal fanciers. No, that's for the phobia booth. Tonight, club members have been asked to bring along friends and family that have animal phobias. The purpose of setting this up is purely to sort of allow people to come face to face with what they, they've been scared of probably most of their life. Um, if they end up becoming customers and, and buying some of the animals that they were once afraid of, then yeah, of course it's a bonus. Right, shall we start sorting things out then, Kirsten? Rob and wife Trish will be using some of their own stock for the meeting. Just give him Bruce some food. We don't want him chewing people's fingers tonight, because he's hungry. Trish carefully chooses which animals to bring along. No. <laughs> I don't think that's going to help anybody's fears and phobias. We're going to have to go and find another spider. Let's hope we don't get people passing out and fainting and panic attacks. Let's um, have an organised uh, paramedic on standby. Perhaps I should. With the meeting about to start... What we got there? Trish organises the room into sections. Lizards are over there. Cockroaches. Cockroaches, that'll be over there. Snakes over that corner. But Barman Graham is not too sure about tonight's clientele. <laughs> oh, my only place I'm going to be tonight is behind that bar, because it's the safest place in the room. Right. With the room filling up, the meeting gets underway. Guests are invited to get hands on with the exotic creatures. Rodney is the most impressive animal in this place. Small Rodney. There is talk of some uh, 18 foot Burmese python, which I'm not looking forward to seeing, but uh, something different for us to do. I must admit, that's changed from weddings and birthdays and stuff like that. Those not brave enough to have a stroke straight away have signed up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Rob. Come in, darling. Right, one spider in its box. It's in there. Right. I want you to move a little bit closer. How's that? But it's not an immediate success. Absolutely horrific. I don't think you realise how much it actually um, scares me. Next up, it's arachnophobe, Anne-Marie. 
Is it spiders you're scared of, yeah? Yes. Right, okay. Trisha's gonna take full control of the spider. Yep. Okay. Are you scared of that animal? Yes, but I'm not running, so... Okay. It is extremely placid. Would you be prepared to put your hand on the table? I don't want to put you under pressure. Only do it if you are 100% is what you want to do. Bring it a little bit closer. Yeah? I trust that if you want it off, you'll say. You're in absolutely no danger whatsoever. All right, none at all. How's that feel? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? Yes. If at any time you want it off, tell us and we'll take it straight off. Okay. Yeah? Keep talking to me. I'm okay. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? Well done. Thank you. Well done, you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. It was scary. I feel relieved <laughs> to be out of there. So are you going to try and get a spider now? I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to risk it yet. <laughs> People say, right, everyone with reptiles are all geeks and this, that and the other. But I mean, David Beckham's got bearded dragon. Next in the booth, it's someone who's petrified of snakes. Firstly, what we're going to do, if it's okay, we bring the snake up onto the table. Right. Can I do that first? Right. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Graham the barman has taken a break from bar duties to tackle his fear of all things scale. Okay, this is a corn snake, okay? Right. Now then, can I take the lid off? Yeah. I'm going to take the lid off, take the snake out, and Trish is going to move the box away. I'm going to charge the doubles tonight. Okay, no, that's that. fine. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. This is not dangerous, okay, and I'm going to invite you to just feel it. Now, it's going to feel cold because it's been in the box. Well, a lot of people think they're slimy and horrible, and they're not. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah? It's cool, it's cool. Is that alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I want to put a centre part in your hand, okay. okay? Is that all right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right, you've now got half of the snake. How does that feel? Don't forget to breathe. Um, very weird. <laughs> okay, now bring your hand up to here. That's it. That's going to rest down there. Okay, well, look at that, you've got the whole snake. Right. You're okay, I'm here. Okay, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Oh my God, I'm you, you're on your own, independent. You're holding that snake on your own. Hopefully, you won't ever go back to being so petrified as you was. Well done. Thank you. Go and have a drink. <laughs> His name wasn't even on my list. He actually approached me and said, I just want to do it. <laughs> As the evening draws to a close, Rob can reflect on another successful meeting of the South Essex Reptile Club. I haven't got to see anything that's gone on out there tonight, but in here, absolutely over the moon with what, what we've achieved tonight. And it looks like Essex has at least one more convert. Oh my God, six o'clock this evening, never in a million years I thought we'd be standing here doing this. This thing's not moving because it's content and it looks about as docile as me now. <laughs> Next time on the Essex Jungle, a woman at war with her iguanas. Nobody likes them. <laughs> they're in the way, they're in everybody's way. <laughs> Dicing with death in the venom room. These are lethal weapons. You know, these can kill people. Oh, yeah. And we meet Mia, one of Essex's biggest snakes. Oh, give me a... Something I'll put around my neck, I might put my neck out.